Welcome guys. As you can probably guess from the title of the video today, uh, I'm going to be going over my experience with the V7 Weapon Systems 6.5 inch 300 blackout fluted barrel. Uh, so this is a obviously a, a very short 300 blackout barrel, uh, direct gas impingement, and uh, I selected this one after researching all the available similar options. Uh, we'll get into uh, kind of why I picked it. Uh, my overall goals with the build 300 blackout gun to run suppressed 100% of the time uh, in an SD upper configuration and have it be extremely short. So the finished product here should be roughly the length, maybe just slightly longer than a Mark 18 unsuppressed. So in the video, we're going to cover the parts list, assembly of the upper, uh, my function testing with various types of ammo, so a wide variety of supersonic bullet weights as well as subsonic bullet weights. Uh, we'll cover the uh, setup of the gun to make each of those bullet weights run, hopefully. And then at the end, I'll give my total round count overall impressions uh, so far of how the gun's gone together. We're gonna come in here and take a look now. Um, so uh, what really attracted me to this barrel over some of the competitors is it's not the shortest one in the market. There are 6.0s and even a five and a half out there. Uh, but my goal for this barrel was to have a barrel that could run all types of ammunition and be as short as possible. So just based on the research I've done so far, I, I, I think this barrel is gonna meet those requirements. I hope it is. Obviously, we'll cover that later in the video. But two things that really attracted me to this barrel, besides the overall length, are the gas system length. So the gas system, and so you can see the port here, that the, the gas port is further back, so we have a shorter gas system length than a standard pistol gas system length like you find on the vast, vast majority of all uh, 300 blackout barrels. The problem with that is uh, at this barrel length with a pistol gas system, the barrel threads would be running right up to uh, the edge of where the gas block interfaces. So that, that's going to keep you from being able to mount most um, suppressor mounts. So uh, two benefits, I believe, of having the, the proprietary gas system length are potentially running with a wider variety of ammo and I can mount my suppressor. So just to look at what else comes with the barrel here, obviously we have the barrel, uh, comes with this proprietary height gas block. So um, the gas block is titanium. It is set up for, set up to be pinned and set screwed. So you have a, um, you have a roll pin and a set screw holding it on. Uh, the barrel is pre-cut for both of those, so we have the pin cut and a dimple for the set screw, so we have a bomb-proof gas block installation. The rest of the parts that come with the barrel, uh, so in here we have the straight in canal proprietary gas tube, uh, we have the roll pin and the set screw for attaching the gas block, and then we have the tiny roll pin for holding the gas tube inside the gas block. Other interesting components, I'm going to be using the Midwest SP handguard. So uh, this handguard is very large in the middle, <laughs> allowing it to fit over your suppressor. I have the AAC 51T mount, which will be the host for my uh, AAC 762 SDN6. And then uh, just a standard uh, arrow upper, nothing at all special there, 100% mil spec upper. The bolt carrier group is just a standard tool craft mil spec bolt carrier group. I think you guys all know what that looks like. And then just whatever charging handle I have laying around. So those are going to be the other components in the build. And so uh, let's get to assembling it. Okay, we're back. And it is fully assembled. Uh, I went ahead and put on the handguard and suppressor and everything just to uh, go ahead and mock up the front end and make sure it all went together well. Uh, there were no major issues with the build. Like I said, barrel receiver, uh, handguard all went together fine. A couple things I, I will note uh, that I noticed during the build. So first of all, um, when I was doing a concentricity check uh, with the barrel and uh, the suppressor, using a Geisley rod, uh, the, the rod would not drop all the way through the barrel uh, on the first try. So I started looking into the barrel and I actually found a a uh, small burr next to the gas port. So when they drilled for the gas port, they did leave a burr. And all my AR experience, which I've had um, quite a few rifles over 20 years now, I've actually never encountered that before. So I had to get on the old Google and um, go look up what to do. And apparently it's a 
fairly common issue, so I ran uh, just a few wet patches through, and that appears to have knocked it down already. Uh, so now I can get the, um, the concentricity rod through with extremely minimal uh, resistance. Uh, so it comes right at the end now. The advice on the internet seems to be just go ahead and shoot it out. So uh, that's going to be my plan. Uh, we'll see if there's if, if accuracy appears to be a problem. I'll contact V7. Um, but if the accuracy is in line with uh, my 300 blackouts, I'll probably just leave it as is. Uh, the next thing I'll comment on is the uh, Midwest Industries rail lockup. So again, I have a experience with with several of the major uh, rail interfaces at this point in time. Uh, this one I, I think is probably going to be on the probably weaker side in terms of major, you know, or in terms of primary lockup strength between the barrel nut and the, and the uh, rail. Um, the, the upside for me is it's going to be fairly easy to take on and off quickly, which is something that I'm going to want to have for this build. So. I'm not disappointed in it. Uh, I, I don't know. I've, I've got a number of other Midwest products, including a different rail for uh, a SIG 516. And I've always been impressed with, with uh, Midwest overall. They have um, just really good dimensions in their products from what I can tell. So I don't think it's a manufacturing issue. I, I just think it's uh, the design of this particular lockup. The, the rail slides over the uh, barrel nut very easily. And then it's held down by two uh, torque screw or two tor screws here that are torqued to 40 inch pounds. There are some receiver alignment tabs, but they're a little loose. So, again, I, I don't know that this is the world's toughest rail, but I think it's going to be really good for this particular build, um, since, like I said, it is going to be relatively easy to uh, take on and off quickly. So that's going to be good. Uh, one other thing that I'll note, and this this may be self-evident, but the the M-lock underneath the suppressor is very shallow. So um, I got these Magpul uh, Type 2 rail panels, which are really grippy. I like those. Uh, those fit without issue. Um, but for this BCM stubby grip, I had to change the M-lock screws to uh, a shorter screw that sits below flush with the little M-lock T-mount piece. Uh, to make sure that there's no contact between the suppressor and those screws. So as of now, it's set up well. It's uh, the grip's locked down. There's no contact with the suppressor. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it's come together so far. And then the last thing I'll note is the overall length turned out to be slightly longer than I originally anticipated. It's about the same um, overall length as an 11.5 inch unsuppressed uh, with a Surefire closed tine. So still a really short package with the suppressor on. I'm going to be doing the initial shooting uh, with the handguard and the suppressor removed in order to uh, check stability of the projectiles at various different bullet weights before we get into uh, shooting it in this configuration. So one other note, this thing weighs about seven and a half pounds as is uh, with the little SIG optic on there, um, just minus the magazine. So in this configuration, everything you see here is just under seven and a half pounds. So it's not light, but it's also not terribly heavy, so so far so good. I'll see you guys on the range.